Hello. In this video, we're going to review the radiation study sample file that comes with your Ladybug Tools download. So there aren't many components in this script. The first three you should be familiar with by now. It's your weather file URL, the download weather component, and the import EPW component. So you want to make sure by double clicking on that panel that you've selected the correct URL location for your weather file and just hit OK on that. And then you can move on to the create sky matrix component. So the create sky matrix component will create a sky condition. It takes the location from your weather file, direct normal radiation and diffused horizontal radiation to create um, the, the the correct sky conditions you need to simulate radiation on a surface. Now, one key input here that you should pay attention to is the input for the north direction. So this input requires a number between negative 360 and 360 um, counterclockwise from the y axis. And um, if you modeled your buildings already true north, then you definitely want to delete this. If you didn't and you have a, a number or a vector that represents where true north is, you can go ahead and override it in the script. So for the purposes of this example, I'm going to disconnect it. And then the next input that we need to communicate to the sky matrix is what portion of the year or the hours of the year that we want to study for radiation. So the default analysis period is set to one day. So we have June as a start and end month, 21st as a start and end day. And because there's no input for hour, it's automatically set to go for the whole day. So if you wanted to study a longer period or a couple of months, uh, I would suggest connecting a slider. So we need a slider that goes from 1 to 12 for months. And we need a slider that goes from 1 to 31 for the days. And then for the hours, we want to go from 0 to 23. So now I have three sliders. I'm just going to copy that twice. And so this will allow me to say I want to study from January first, zero hours. I'm going to go ahead and delete the six there and also delete the 21. So say I want to study just the winter months or the beginning of the year. I want to go to January. I'm going to go to the 31st of January and the last hour of the day. So I can connect that up to my analysis period. And now you can also check the period by connecting a panel. So we're studying from January 1st to March 31st, the whole day. So it's a three month period that we'll be studying. And there's a couple of other inputs here that are optional. Um, you can connect a Boolean if you want to include increase the resolution of your study. So right now is set to um, a faster run. Uh, which is a Tergenza sky, but if you want the a Reinhardt sky, you should connect a Boolean toggle to set that to true. Okay, but the default is the um, Tergenza sky because it will run faster. Okay, the next imp input here is if you have some ground surfaces, say your building is near water, or something that might be highly reflective, you can go ahead and connect a value, a number, between 0 and 1 to note the average ground reflectance that is associated with the sky matrix. So if you're near water, this is where you can go ahead and update the number. And there's also an optional um, folder uh, that you can connect here, uh, a, a um, and then there's also a optional file path that you connect to the folder if you want to save your radiation runs. Um, and that's all you need to do for the Create Sky Matrix. 
Uh, you can visualize the sky matrix by connecting a sky dome. That's what this component is doing. And by default, this component is turned off. So it's, it's disabled, excuse me. Uh, you can enable it by clicking on it. For now, I'm going to leave it disabled because I want to show you the run radiation study component, and then I'll turn it on. So you take the output from your sky matrix and you connect it to the run radiation or the incident radiation component. This requires two inputs for geometry. So there's the geometry that you're testing as the first input. And there's already a default um, building that's built into this geometry. So I'm going to go ahead, right click, and I'm going to clear the values because I have some geometry that I want to test for myself. This, um, the second input or the geometry is for context, so your surrounding buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and clear values on that as well. And then I'll show you how to connect that back. And then the next two inputs are grid size. So this is set to one. So that is a that's connected to the units that you are using in Rhino. So if you're working in meters, this would be one meter by one meter square grid. If you're working in feet, this would be one foot by one foot. And if you're working in inches, this would be one inch by one inch. I do not recommend that. The smaller the grid size, the longer the radiation run, especially if you're doing an annual study. Then there's an offset distance input. Typically, it's set to be as close to the surface you're testing as possible in the case of uh, building geometry, because you want to see how much radiation actually falls on the surface. There can be instances where you may want to offset that grid further from your actual geometry. But for now, the default is set to be as close to this, the test geometry as possible. And the last input here is a Boolean toggle to turn on and off. But before we set that to true, we're going to go ahead and right click on the geometry and set one geometry, which will take us to our Rhino space where I already have some buildings modeled. And so I want to test radiation on that middle building. And then I'm going to set multiple geometries for the rest of the context around it. So I'll connect a couple and hit enter. All right. And now we're ready to go ahead and let that run. So I'll double click on false to let that run and hit pause. So that went ahead and ran and now it's turned to true. So if we go to our Rhino space, we'll now see that the geometry is there. And you'll see that it looks kind of speckled and that's because the geometry is here in um, shaded view. So if I switch to wireframe, oops, Actually, we want to stay in shaded and we want to turn the geometry off so you can hide objects and then you can see the radiation study here. And another trick here is to disable the preview on the context geometry. So if you right click on it and there's a preview option, you can go ahead and do that. And that will take care of the shading, the gray shading that you were seeing on the context buildings. So now you can see my building, the south facade, has the most radiation. Uh, the west facade, surprisingly, doesn't have much, but that's because my context building is probably providing a lot of shading. And on the east, we can see there's a little bit of shade from these two buildings. But for the most part, we have a pretty good radiation run here. Um, if you want to analyze it further, you can, um, let's take a look at the visualized sky matrix now. So if I enable this, you can click on your mouse wheel to bring apart, bring, um, make it visible, or you can right click on the icon and turn the preview on. So I'm just gonna turn that on. So in Rhino, we automatically see a rad radiation dome appear. Uh, it always, by default, appears at the 0, 0 location. So if you want to move it from the default location, you can create a point. I already have one in my model. And go back to your Visualize Sky Matrix input and add a point parameter by typing in point and setting one point. So I'm going to move it to the right and connect it to the center point input and go back so we can see, okay, my radiation dome is to the right now and I can go back to looking at my building. 
Um, so before we had talked about this west building perhaps being um, in the way for that sun, and that's why you're seeing a lot of that shading. So if we were to move this uh, building and rerun the solar radiation analysis, we can see the impact that the building had on our test geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and let that rerun and hit pause here. So now that the building has moved, you can see that a greater portion of my building, my test building, has more radiation. And if we go back to our top view, it doesn't impact the radiation dome since that's somewhat of a constant and it doesn't take into account context. And so that's why you'll see a difference between your actual building and the radiation dome. The radiation dome is really just a visual way of assessing where the sun is in the sky respective to your building. Okay. Um, I guess that's all I have for you guys in this video. Thank you so much.